This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. What's happening, everybody? Welcome back, you beautiful people. It is 2024 and currently is uh, back in action, man, here to talk about KC Current and all things in WSL. It's me, Daniel Kuzer, here with my lovely co host, Chris Wright. Chris, buddy, how was your holidays, my friend? It was good. It went by way too quickly. Yeah. The whole Christmas, New Year's, it just went by in a flash, at least for me. Right, right. It's a, uh, God, dude, when was the last time we did this podcast? We didn't do it after Christmas, right? We didn't right. talk about uh, all our presents. Uh, we, <laughs> we we didn't, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know, we didn't, we haven't connected in a while, man. It's crazy to see you. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot going on for a while, right? And then just right when we decided to take one more additional week, boom. That's when all the all the fun stuff just kind of came rolling downhill. Yeah, so we got a lot to talk about. Hopefully, some more stuff coming down the pipeline uh, here in the near future. I mean, I don't think we've made as many announcements as other teams have. That's for sure. Uh, Gotham FC continues to just get stacked. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. But the rich get richer, and then we, you know, build a new stadium. So there's that. Uh, <laughs> did you know this? Did you know Casey Kerr is building a new stadium? I feel like I see it every other day. Every on, on social every media. day. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh I get it though. You put a lot of money into something. You should probably hit on it on a daily basis. Um, although you're not working on getting new people in the doors because you went ahead and sold out your season ticket allotment. So <laughs> it is what it is there. Hopefully you're building that wait list, right? I do want to give credit to the social media team because that's got to be hard to come up with creative ways to show off your stadium like every other day or you know, a couple times a week, but they're doing a really good job of it. I don't think yeah. I could do as well as, you know. Do I want to give credit to the social media team, to all social media teams that have to deal with uh, dum-dums on Twitter that just will blast them. And it's like, hold on, this is some person that's into multimedia and everything, a communications degree and whatnot. And you're asking them to announce signings, but you know, uh, we get it. You have a stadium announce signings that aren't 15 years old or whatever. I get that. I get the frustration, but social media people is not where you air that out. <laughs> it's, it's funny to me. And I'm sure I hopefully, hopefully it's equally as funny to the social media person. Uh, dude, speaking of, uh, me, multi social media and whatnot, if you have yet to, do so. Leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcast or Spotify. Um, or you can even send us an email if you do not have these platforms. You can know their pod at gmail.com. I have an email from our good friend Steve. Um, don't know Steve, but he's our good friend now. So he is now. Depending on uh, what he says. We'll see. Message us in <laughs> December, man. De- almost a month ago. So I feel really bad. Steve, I've been holding on to this for a long time, my man. You've been in my inbox as a reminder. I just haven't met with Chris to uh, to get it done. So, hey, Steve hit us up and he said, uh, hi, Dan and Chris. That's us, buddy. Uh, I was wondering if you could start talking my idea into existence. I think that the NWSL championship game should be held at CPKC Stadium every year, as it is the only women's only stadium in the world. Uh, if any owners complain, the NWSL should say, build a women's specific stadium and we'll put you in the rotation of any women's stadiums. Uh, maybe you don't think this is a good idea, but if you do, Dan should go full Dan, making a big deal about this, needing to be the new rules. <laughs> Thanks for all your hard work. I really appreciate your podcast each week. Steve, appreciate that. My that's, man. Uh, that's good words. Uh, what? How do you feel about that? I Obviously, it doesn't feel like that's a possibility, but damn, that'd be cool. You know what I mean? We talked about it before the last championship, right? Because we went to the championship that the current we're in, you know, it was yeah. in Washington. And I can't remember what it was, 16,000 or something like that, maybe 17,000, right. which clearly exceeds our stadium. So at the time, I was thinking if that's kind of the average, maybe we could pull it off. I mean, what a way to celebrate the very first women's built stadium, professional stadium, than having the championship here. But just seeing how much it's grown last year at last year or this this year's championship, it was like almost thirty. I don't see that happening. Yeah. But but what about like an all star game? Hey, some kind of an all star game, some yeah. friendlies for sure. I'm sure they're eyeballing 
Uh, that, that is tough to say, right? Because it's like, wow, how cool would it be to host, you know, the NWSL Cup? But we capacity what it is, like, it feels like we pigeonholed ourselves, man. We, we put us in a corner and it's like, sorry, these are the seats we have. We know you're getting this much elsewhere, uh, but we're gonna we're just gonna deal with this much. Like even if you had a championship game that was not the current, we're not playing in it. I think you get eleven thousand five hundred Kansas City fans. Yeah. So, yeah, like you said, they really pigeonhole themselves, which is really unfortunate. But I now it's gonna be sick, though. It's gonna get loud. Dare I say, dope? It's it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be. Don't the young kids say? I don't know. I've been I've been saying dope a lot lately. I don't know why. It's kind of a where'd you get that from? Thing. I don't know, but I'm just I'll be playing video games. I'll be like dope, and I don't I don't know when I started that. You've known me for a long time. I've never said that. Yeah. Um, it's just I'm just I've outgrown you, my friend. I'm too cool. <laughs> I've I've moved I've moved on. That's probably true. There's no argument for me. Oh shoot. Uh. Dude, I was I was New Year's man. I was ta- something Jimmy never knew was that uh, you're supposed to eat black eyed peas on New Year's Day. Did you know this? I did not know that. Really? I'm just yeah. educating fools all over the place. How come you? How come no one knows this? You're too cool. I mean, we're just not in the same type of cool social well, group. This is not levels of above. This is very much like a grandmother's tale. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it's supposed to give you good luck, man. If you eat black eyed peas on New Year's Day, it's like the thing. Gosh, I just teach my friends all some good stuff, man. I'm just, I'm such a good friend. You t- hear that, Tucker? Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> Black Eyed Peas. He's like, I listened to him. I didn't need him, no. So, guess we're in trouble. Hey, it works, man. Tucker's heard it. Look at this. Tucker knows. He's got a grandma who cares. <laughs> hey, uh, dude, we, we had some dope. dope. We had some Speaking dope stones. Yeah. Uh, I, everyone, first of all, we're going to talk about them, but there were some children that we signed. We have children on the team now. It's wild to think that uh, children are so skilled like this these days, but they are evolving well beyond my uh, video game and trampoline athleticism years. Uh, these soccer players, man, just get better and, and younger. But we have a bigger signing than those two ladies, which we will backtrack and revisit. Um, Malawi... National team captain, Timwa Chawinga. Is that right? Is that how you say that? I think it's good, yeah. Seems pretty easy to say. Uh, to a two-year contract through the 2025 season. Dude, this is a fast, a very fast human being. Uh, seven-time champion with uh, Wuhan Jiangan University FC, including four Chinese women's Super League titles. Uh, this is my favorite thing, though. Scored 83 goals in 84 matches. What the what? How does that? Hold on. I was under the impression that if you scored about every other game, you're a pretty good striker. If you're averaging half a goal a game, that's pretty good. But this person's averaging almost a goal a game? What? Well, who, who, who are they playing against? School, uh, uh, University of the Blind? What what was going? I'm sorry. It just seems. It, I'm sorry if that's it's, offensive. It's, it's like a video game. It's like a video yeah. game, right? It, it, it's it's like that's how I play FIFA. FIFA numbers, yeah. I play FIFA on beginner. FIFA on beginner, and it's uh, it's not challenging at all, but it's fun. <laughs> well, she scored what 55 goals in three seasons with uh, the Swedish club. I think they're actually Division Two, so I don't think they're Division One. I. I know they had a stint in Division One for a time. But uh, averaging 18 goals per season in Sweden. Remarkable. Look, and I don't even care what league you're scoring in. I don't care what division in that league you're scoring in. If you have a nose for goal, you have a nose for goal. And 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 Tim Law's going to come in here with a nose for goal, man. Like just ready to put numbers up there, working alongside someone like Dabinia. You know, Lola Bata in there assisting getting goals of her own. Like, it, it's just, I'm excited about this. Is this good? Tell me it's good. It's good. It, it's uh, it's dope, some some may say. But did you see that she scored 63 goals for club and country last year, which leads the world, men's and women's? Yeah. How yeah. crazy is that? Uh, It's it's weird. And I'm like, if that, if that was a man, though, 
I mean, that we're talking about it more, right? Like more people would be talking about that. Right. But so we need to be talking about this. This is crazy. Um, I'm excited to bring her on, dude, to see, you know, to, uh, I've never heard of these teams. I've, I've very, I've rarely heard of the leagues. You know, it's uh, bring her in and see what she can do. This is a growing league and, and she can help. It really seemed like the the staff wanted to bring in a, a, a forward, something different, right? I imagine, you know, they were interested in somebody like Mallory Swanson. I mean, who wasn't, right? She's one of the premier forwards in the world. So, but it looks like right. she's going to re sign with Chicago. And if you're Naturally, taking a look, right? Because her yeah, husband's there. I mean, it, exactly. And if you I take a look it. at the forwards in the United States and who's available, nobody really lights the world on fire. So I do give the, the front office credit for going outside the US and finding somebody clearly has the traits, clearly has the skills to put the ball in the back of the net. Now, obviously, will it translate to the NWSL? We don't know. That's the big question. Right. But like you said, if somebody has a knack for it, you know, just put them in that scenario, give them that opportunity, and just see what happens. Look, in her her first statement uh, for this team, you know, she, she said, this team is world-class in every way, from the facilities to the environment at the club. I'm excited to get started and hopefully bring home a championship. Saying the word championship right there. That's goals, dude. Uh, also, I'm reading that uh, her name means love in her native Tumbuka language. So, I mean, if she scores goals and we're not doing heart hands, I don't know. I don't know what everyone's problem is. Like, that seems like the natural celebration. Yeah. I mean, the whole team should do it, right? You get a celebration. Yeah. Doing something like that. Why not? My name means love. Can you believe that? Uh, I'll, I won't tell you what my name means because it's inappropriate. I always envy people have like last names or something that has meaning. Like, what does Chris mean? It means nothing, right? Like, it'd be cool to have a name like that. Yeah, I mean, I think anyway. My what? Well, my nickname abbreviated, you know, Coos. People call me Coos. Yeah, it's not great over overseas. It's not great. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's slang. It's a curse word. It's not not a good thing. Uh, dude. Well, welcome to Malawi International, uh, Timwa. Chowinga, we're excited. Um, we need to take a quick break, real quick, don't we? We should probably do that. I was not, I was not instructed to take a break, but let's. Uh, hopefully, we'll take a break, real quick. We'll be right back. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network. Make sure you download our new app. Find it on the App Store or Google Play. Just search KC Sports Network. And welcome back, everybody. Hey, um, we playing video games this weekend? We, yeah, I don't see why not. Oh, all right. We, we, we played over the holiday weekend, man. I know, dude. Uh, back on my Xbox Life. It's a good time. What I, game had my I don't even remember what the game was called. It's called It Takes Two, and it's arguably the most awesomest co-op game out there. It's crazy. Chris had to, oh, remember our, remember our hammer and nail shit? <laughs> that was crazy. You have to like work with each other, communicate, and and, and yeah. help navigate the level. It's a lot of fun. If, if you like it's, to play co-op with a, a friend or loved one, especially a loved one, it's, um, it's a lot of fun. It, uh, games can break up relationships, my friend. There, there's another game my wife and I play called Overcooked, where we're just in the kitchen cooking up meals, and you're looking at the recipe and what the order is, and you get it and you deliver it, but it's in this environment of like, you might be on a hot air balloon or on a on a raging river where your rafts are constantly changing, and it's a uh, that'll break up your marriage. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, we did have uh, Casey Kern had a couple other players announced. Um, where are these at? Claire Hutton, midfielder, um, turns eighteen this month, so. It's uh, the second player to be signed to Casey Current under the NWSL's under-18 entry mechanism. Vlatko says the potential Claire has is incredible and is an amazing talent. Vlatko's been in this U.S. national team system for a minute. He's seen these younger players. So to bring someone in like this, I assume it's a good bet. Yeah, it, and a couple things. Uh, she was named to the under-20 January uh, camp for the the national team. Uh, oh yes, and that's her first under twenty call up. So congratulations to her. It's a, that's a I think that was announced a couple days ago. 
or yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's just exciting. It really does offset the draft. Like we're upset and, and rightfully so. We ranted about it um, on our last podcast about trading our third overall pick, which still bothers me. But you get a player who is going to, you know, play with the current, you know, build up through the current and just get into the system, develop as a player and as a person. That could have been a top five pick down the road. We don't know, right? So I, this is a trend for um, the NWSL, getting these young players in here, like overseas, getting them in, into our academy or at least our team in this scenario, and, and just skipping that college draft altogether. I think you're going to see a lot of top players do this. I guarantee you, you know, down the road, we're going to look back and a lot of these players who are coming up through this youth system, they, they would be top picks. But now we're, we're just skipping that route altogether. I think she's one of them. I think she would be a top college pick if she went that route. Good point. Uh, all I know is what she has said in her uh, uh, little press conference and how intense she looks in her uh, picture that they posted. Like she, I mean, game face, dude. All business. She's ready to go. All, all business. Definite business. Uh, also looks like has a little scar right here because someone fucked around and found out. Guaranteed. Uh, she can scrap. I just, I'm calling her right now. She can scrap. Um, but you do, she, she, uh, harked on the, you know, she, she talked up the facilities and the environment of the club as well. Um, very excited to play for Vlatko and the coaching staff and help the team win some hardware and however they can. We talked about it. I mean, with the new signing we got, she also mentioned, you know, the facilities and the training, training facility in the stadium. I mean, this is a great way to beat out other teams in the U.S. or even overseas to get their services. It it's something that obviously doesn't show up, um, you know, on the cap or anything like that. But I mean, it's paying dividends, right? It's we probably got Dabinia because of it. You know, we're getting some of the youth players because because of it. So. It's just paying dividends all around, and I'm excited to have her. And she's going to get to play with, like, Lowe, Dabinia, um, Di Bernardo, uh, World Cup champion uh, uh, Gatra. Like, to come in and just immediately play with those players, it's fantastic. Two of those three people you mentioned, I forgot were on the team because they barely played. <laughs> that's, so, that's so wild. You said Gatra, and I was like, oh, look at that shit. <laughs> I didn't know it was that. Bad deal, man. But I hear, hey. Here's to a healthier 2024 for everyone. Uh, dude, the last couple of months saw one little Tuesday announcement of uh, new restaurants in the new stadium. And this has been this has been one of the high points of uh, my fandom for this club and the stadium. And uh, just to kind of look at like where our seats are and uh, you know what we're what we are near, and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. You could do a culinary tour of Kansas City and get a bunch of different worldly foods just by going to a game. Yeah. It's yeah, it's wild. I'm excited to dabble in it, man. And there's like three to yet be announced, I guess. But they still say coming soon, right? So cool, cool, cool. Any any one of those uh any one of those places you're looking forward to most in that area? Oh, uh... Not off the top of my head. I just remember every time we look at them when it's announced, I just look up to see if they have food I would enjoy, and they all do. Yeah. So well, it's got to be that tor tortilleria place for me. Like, let's get some tacos, sit down, watch the game. Like, that just sounds like a great time. They do need to install those, uh, oh, God, like the elementary school, like the desks that flip up, and you could just, yes. just eat and watch a game. Oh, it's man. I wish, uh, Dude, we need, I wish there was some invention. Oh, put me on Shark Tank or whatever that like something that attaches to a hoodie and it just pops up and you got your little TV tray and you just, you had it with you the whole time. <laughs> Perfect. Make it happen. Outstanding. Uh, oh, dude, where are we going now? Uh, coach, coaching staff? That was a today thing. That was a today uh, thing. That was an hour ago. Wednesday, Wednesday January 10th. Uh, coaching staff has been pretty solidified here man um Vlatko's getting his people in order some of these names um I don't want to really pronounce because I am embarrassed but it, I'm gonna give it a shot so looks like assistant coach man uh Milan Ivanovich 
Milan, maybe Milan, uh, Freya Kuhn, Lucas Rodriguez, and Lupko Rocky Kematowski. God, you did such a good job. Under did my best. I could have never. I could have never. I hate that the world has conditioned me to to speak names like this and immediately think Bond villain. <laughs> and I say European name, you think of Bond villain right off the yeah. bat. That's where I've been conditioned, and it's it's not my fault. It's not my fault at all. I'm trying to get out of it, but that's just where it is, man. You see the movies and the video games, and it's like, the, that's bad. <laughs> but these guys are good, dude. I'm excited about this. Um, are any of those returners from last year? No. Uh, I mean, no. we know Lucas Rodriguez, right? You know, uh, Why do I know Freya Tom, Kuhn? Where's that coming from? Well, Freya Kuhn was the, uh, the manager at LAFC. Before right. she got she got let go, um, and she might just be one of those coaches that are that's better as an assistant than a head coach, right? And there's no yeah. shame in that. You see it in other sports or the NFL all the time. Some people are just better offensive coordinators than head coaches. That's fine, but she gets a, a shot here with Flodko. I love to see it. Um, you know, Rodriguez. I you know he he's he's around Kansas City all the time with the comments. So and okay, one thing. I- how do you know that? Uh, didn't he coach for the Comets? I believe. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, I I have no. I I know he played professionally for uh, five seasons with Minnesota United FC. Uh, oh, nine years playing for the Comets. Yeah. Interesting. Nine years. Holy shit. That's a while. And one thing I didn't know until today, until I read up on it, was Ivanovic. He was actually. Um, He's been Vladko's assistant at FC Casey, uh, the Reign, and the U.S. Women's National Team. Oh, shit. So that's a okay. really cool tie-in to keep that kind of continuity within his coaching yeah. staff. So I think it's a fantastic list here. Coom was with Sky Blue uh, before yeah. they were Gotham, and that's when she went to go uh, be a coach of Angel City a couple of years ago. Yep. Cool, man. What, well, they, they know the league. They all know yeah. the league. They know... They know how this works, so I'm excited. Uh, it looks like uh, Kamatovsky, sim- known simply as Rocky, uh, uh, is maybe a goalkeeper coach? Yep. You know, he's director of goalkeeping uh, for the Fe- Football Federation of Macedonia. And he was also with Andonovsky in Seattle, huh? Yep. Cool. So I like it, kind of bringing back the old crew where, the- where he's had a lot of success. So, oh, how did he get getting the band back together? That's how it, uh, uh, oh man, I'm not sure if you saw that. I think they were shooting a commercial and, and in, in all their pads and jerseys walked Dan Marino, Jerry Rice, Emmett Smith, um, someone else. And they were like me and the boys getting ready to get, get on that NCAA 24 and, uh, GTA (laughs) six. And they're just, they're just padded up, man. Dan Marino's got like no butt. it's, It's just so funny. (laughs) <laughs> you haven't seen this? Yeah, I have. So I'm, oh, okay. I like the Emmett Smith one. Because uh, Emmett Smith still looks like he could ball. <laughs> yeah, he absolutely does. He, do, he looks like he has not aged that much at all. No, he still got the beard, but Other than that. J- Jerry Rice looks like he can still run a route or two as well. It's yep. uh dude looking spry. So, cool. Welcome to the coaches. Uh, we talked about Claire Hutton getting called up for the U-20. Uh, we got a kit sponsor. We got a front of the kit partnership, and it happens to be the uh, United Way of Greater Kansas City. So instead of, uh, what was it before, Palmer? Palmer Square Capital. Palmer Square Capital. uh, It will now be, um, when we say that, I want to say Axe Cap. Axe Capital (laughs) from Billions. (laughs) Love that show. It will be United Way of Greater Kansas City. So that's cool. Seems like a good partnership, man. Something local. United Way is a big freaking deal. You know, they're always doing things for the betterment of others. Kind of, they're just keeping the theme of keeping everything kind of within the community and local. And I absolutely love that. They could probably sell that sponsorship for so much more than what they did with Kansas City. And yeah. they chose to, to keep it local. So fantastic. True. Yeah, very true. Um, in other news, uh, Addison Merrick went to the Utah Royals who matched or exceeded Casey Currents restricted free agent offer. We we were fans of Addison Merrick, man. 
we 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 touted her success, we liked everything she would bring when she got to the pitch, and uh, ultimately decided to take a better offer. Yeah, when, whenever you have turnover for coaching staff and management, right, that's going to happen. I mean, she was a player we traded for from Louisville, uh, came in and played quite a bit right away. You know, she started on the team in the championship. Um, she really kind of excels in like a three back uh, system. Yeah. So Flacco likes to have four on the back line. So it's not exactly surprising. She would have been really good depth if Utah didn't match. But uh, like I said, she'll be missing. And she had one of the most aggressive slide tackles you will ever see. Like just taking ankles out. And every time yeah. she went to ground, you're like, please don't be a penalty. Please don't be a penalty. And luckily it never was, but so much fun to watch on that back line. It's, uh, you know, didn't get a ton of playing time. Yeah, not, not, not year, consistent. She didn't get much at all. Yeah, yeah not consistent in any ways. Uh, Rock Chalk Jayhawk, of course. Um, Lee Summit. Lee Summit gal. So, you know, kind of leaving her hometown team. I mean, I'm sure this was a big decision. I can't imagine. It's like, okay, I have an offer here, you know, and uh, I'm going to go elsewhere, spread my wings, head out to Mormon country, get some balling out, you know? But like we talked about, you know, these players don't get paid a ton or certainly not what they're worth. So if you got to make the money when you can, where you can. So exactly. I don't blame me at all. Yeah. If you're getting more money, I, I don't know what the housing market is or anything up there, but like I can, I would assume it's maybe considerable. Um, comparable, but in that same conversation, man, uh, Chardonnay Curran got picked up by Chicago. So I'm going to go up there and Chicago needs all the help they can get. So <laughs> yeah, a lot, most of their players have left. Yeah. Um, I, I'm happy for her though. Like she's a player who needed a, a different environment, right? She was not going to break through the midfield here. Um, yeah. outside of injury, there's just too much talent. So she needed a fresh start. I'm glad she got it. I'd be interested to know if uh, if she did any dabbling in the uh, California market since her partner, uh, Alex Loera, is uh, with Bay FC. So I, 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 you kind of, you got, when that kind of thing happens, when there's relationships, you kind of wonder if they're going to play in the same same area, right? Right. So, but that a uh, long distance relationship. Let's keep an eye on that. That's a reality show right there. That'd be, I'd watch it. Uh, Jimmy made fun of me, man, for watching uh, Vanderpump Rules. You don't even know what that is, do you? I don't, but I feel I'm not going to lie. I'm going to have to. We're going to have a difference in opinion on this one. I feel like you deserve to be made fun of just a, just a touch. Well, actually, as soon as I said that, Tucker called me out. Banger yeah. show. Tucker said, "Banger show, dude." You no, know I, I like that statement. My wife asked me who my favorite person is on that show, and I say none of them. I have I have rankings of who I hate the least. <laughs> but I do not have a favorite because I'll be like, I'll be like, this person's my favorite. And then he does something stupid. And I'm like, okay, I hate him now. Or I'll be like, this girl's actually very sweet. I like her. And then she goes off and becomes a drunk idiot. And I'm like, okay, I hate her now. <laughs> it's uh, season 11 kick, uh, starts yeah. at the end of this month. Buddy, I'm almost through season five. And I started last month. Just been, just been churning it out. Getting crazy. Oh my goodness. It's don't do it. I mean, don't do it. It's it's uh I don't know. I don't know why it's successful. I don't know why people watch it, but I here I am absorbing the trash. So there you go, man. Tucker said his girlfriend watches, sucked him right in. Uh Marissa would always say something to me, and then I finally just started seeing stuff online. And she was actually very pissed at me that it took that to get me on and instead of listening to her. And I was like, I don't I just couldn't do it. I just it was on Bravo. I don't watch shit on Bravo. Have you ever watched a single thing on Bravo? I don't think so. No, that's like real housewives stuff, man. I do not watch that. I'll tell you that right now. Absolutely not. You might you might graduate into real ha- housewives for housewives of of Atlanta or whatever they are now. I think there's like 10 different spin-offs per location. See, I'm a completionist though. I, I would have to like go back and watch them all to see relationships develop. That's why I just couldn't start on season 11 of Vanderpump Rules, I was like, I need to go to episode one and see it through. And it's also something you could just put in the background and like play video games. I don't need to like even watch intently. You can just do whatever, man. It's mindless. So. Well, have fun with that. (laughs) (laughs) 
you're like, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll do my actual job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Where, uh, where are we at now? We talked about Claire Hutton, uh, NWSL competition update. Some What's big exciting right? news. Salary cap shit, right? Salary cap increased. Okay. Um, yeah, it increased about 40%. So it is, I think it was like 1.9 million last year, something like that. And it's now, Wait, what was the percentage? It's around like 35 to 40% increase, which is Goodness. pretty significant. Okay. Uh, which um, to... 2,750,000 uh, is the cap for this year. And it's going to be used against the 22 to 26 player roster. That's um, weird to me. How come it's not a set number? Why is it a range of numbers? I mean, technically you don't have to have a, a full squad, right? I mean, huh. I mean so let me put it this way. I guess if if you you wanted to pay some some high valued players a premium, I mean, you don't have to have that money spread across twenty six. You could have it spread across twenty two. Interesting. It, yeah, I guess you could. Yeah. So it just kind of huh. depends on how they want to structure that. Okay, I feel you. Yeah. Uh, sounds like we're phasing out allocation money. Thank God. Yeah, we are, and it's going to be phased out. Um, by December 31st, 2026. Uh, so that's a good thing. I think allocation money confuses everybody because you have to pay down contracts and just a bunch of nonsense. I like the NFL style cap. I think most people do. It's straightforward. Um, it's easier to understand than this MLS, you know, former NWSL craziness. But one thing that caught my eye was if you have a transfer th- transfer fee threshold, of over five hundred thousand, or in excess over five hundred thousand, you will get a twenty five percent charge against that team's salary cap. So you can go bring in players and, and pay a transfer fee of up to like five hundred thousand, but you go over and you have a twenty five percent charge against your team's cap. Well, that's not good, right? It depends. Um, I think that gives teams a level of fairness. So, like, if you have San Diego going to grab Sam Kerr, hypothetically, you know, it, it would make it so that they can't do that a lot more than other teams. Um, even though I feel like the current would be one of those teams that do that and try and get away with it. Uh, but I like parity. I like fairness over the league or in the league. Sure. So it makes yeah, sense. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, we're not required to use allocation money to pay for transfer and trade fees. Oh, that's interesting, right? Uh, what is this? What is this related party transaction policy? That uh, uh, does that mean anything to us at all? Uh, NWSL teams with investors who maintain a majority stake in or position of influence with a non-NWSL team and seek to loan and transfer players between the two clubs. My guess, that's probably between like. Washington Spirit, who Michelle Kang owns the Spirit, and then a European team. So that way, you ah. just can't, you know, loan you players transfer, yeah, at a cheap, cheap price. So that would be like uh, NYCFC doing that with Manchester City and stuff. Exactly. I'm sure there's a similar situation there. Uh, you know, we have a revised under 18 entry mechanism that will now allow teams a maximum of four U18 players between its senior roster and entry list. There will be full guidelines coming out at a later date. I highly expect a season schedule one of these days. I I know we didn't get it till like end of February one time. Um, but like I just since MLS did theirs mid December, I'm just like, all right, NWSL, let's go. And I, I know that's not how it works. I'm like, ah, we're just a little spoiled right now. Well, you know, NWSL depends on other teams, other sports for their stadium usage. So I know that's harder to work around, but I mean, build a all, stadium. Build a stadium. What's the big deal? St- yeah. Just what's holding what's the holdup? Um Yeah. Did you know we're getting one? <laughs> but yeah, that's one of those things we all get really anxious because we want to plan our vacations. We want to just schedule our life and 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 don't want to miss games or travel to games, right? We want to travel to games as well. So sure. Everybody gets very anxious around that time. Speaking of anxious, man, one of the things that you love to pay attention to and uh uh i i kind of feed off of your your uh 
you know, your your excitement for it as well is the NWSL draft. You love a good draft, man. Uh, I know you're an NFL draft guy uh, and, and NWSL draft, you kind of get into it as well. Since we got rid of our first round pick, what's your excitement level this year? I'm going to be honest, it's not as high. Um, and, it, and I don't think it, you could sense in all the social media and just the fan base as a whole that once we trade away that pick for roster protection, the interest went down. And that's kind of yeah. expected, right? If any team doesn't have a, a first round pick, you know, it, it definitely lowers the interest. We still have three, though. We have pick what, 18, 32, and 46. Yeah. So, Anything after like pick six or seven is kind of a crapshoot. Um, other leagues, you can tend to predict things a little more, um, but with the NW- NWSL, it's kind of unpredictable after the more well known picks. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited. Um, last year, we only kept a couple picks because uh, we had like seven, I believe, seven picks last year. We only have three. So um, we'll see if they're able to, to make a very hard earned roster spot. Yeah, I mean last year's draft picks really didn't pan out for much. In in that sense, I mean like some of them aren't even with the team anymore. You know? Yeah. So I mean it's uh this will be interesting. It's in Anaheim at the Anaheim Convention Center uh during the United Soccer Coaches Convention. Uh it's a free thing to attend. Do you know that? I mean if I was in the area, I would absolutely be there. Oh, 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, NWSL drafts this Friday, folks, if I didn't say that. Um, it begins at uh, 7 o'clock Central Time. Uh, televised on ION. Is it just ION? ION, yeah. Okay. Um, for the first two rounds, which is from, you know, 7 to 9 hour time. And then streamed on ION+. Plus. First time I've ever heard those words. I, I, that is the only plus membership I do not own. Probably. <laughs> I think ION is actually a, an, an antenna channel. I think you can actually get it through your antenna. If you have really, I think so. Yeah. Um, so if it goes to ION plus, I don't know how accessible it is there, but when it's on the antenna channel, I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but, uh, you should be able to catch probably the first round. Antenna channel is 27.3. There you go. That's it. I got it for you. Um, cool. I mean, I yeah, I'm, I'll try to watch this, man. Stream it or what, whatever I can do. So, um, Is okay. there any positions you think we should address in the draft? Anything? Any positions that kind of stand out to you? I know it's still in flux because we could have player announcements and all that, but. Yeah, I don't really know, right? Because we thought we had a pretty solid squad last year and then it turned out not being so great. So it's just kind of like, I don't feel like we need to reinvent the wheel here. But, uh, you know, I guess, you know, you put that team needs are our midfield and defender. I, in that sense, I I will steal your recommendation and say the same thing. Uh, it makes the most sense. I mean, so. how, if you take a look at our defense, right, we have a... Four very solid center backs, Robinson, um, Ball, uh, Balasagar, and Lauren, right? But outside of that, our starters are Gloss and Izzy Rodriguez. While they're both yeah. great starters, nobody's going to you know, take their position. You got to think about depth, right? What if Izzy gets hurt? You hope she doesn't. Um, and, and what if Gloss gets hurt? I mean, she hasn't even played a game. But uh, And I know Mace can kind of... She has that flexibility to move kind of in, in those positions, but I think you need to find some depth, find some depth there. For sure. And same with midfield. Like you mentioned, uh, Di Bernardo, Gatra, like they haven't played much and they're on the last year of their contract coming up and, and so is Dabinia for that, for that fact. So why not get some good young midfielders who can, com- you know, not compete for a spot because that's going to be hard to get, but learn from those players, and then maybe next year step up and kind of see what they got. No, for sure. For sure, man. Um, well, I mean, the season's still a few months still a few months out. We don't have an official uh, uh, schedule yet, but it's coming, dude. I can sense it. 
And there's one player I would like to get. I'm going to throw this out there. Megan Bornkamp out of, out of uh, Clemson. She's kind of around the end of the first, early second area from the mocks I've been seeing. She primarily plays center back, but in her collegiate career, she's played forward, midfielder, center back. That's the type of versatility I think Vladko would do wonders with. Yeah. And on top of that, you know, we need a somebody to learn and grow into the the six, kind of the D mid position. So if we can draft one of those players and just kind of learn and maybe hone their skills to one position, I think she would be a, a great uh, player to do so. Good point. I mean, Vlatko's never uh, hesitated to put someone in a position they're not exactly primary in. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. uh, he did that shit in the World Cup, and it didn't really work out there. We all we all yeah. hash that. Yeah. So I don't know. It's exciting. I I think you can uh, take some of these players and really mold them into something um, really useful in this league. So curious to see what he does. Yeah. Cool. 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 Um. What else, man? That's uh, that's oh my, just about all we've missed. I feel like we burned through a lot. We had a lot to go over, so we kind of burned through it. Yeah. Is that? Uh, yeah, I, th- I think that's it. Pretty uh, much it. Yeah, unless there's some new stadium updates we don't know about. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. There'll be there'll be some more vendors there for sure. Um, man, getting excited. 2024 means a new soccer season's right around the corner. Um, it means, you know, hey, you just ramped up big, t- you know, big 12 play, uh, uh, NFL's getting into the playoffs. Your, your Cowboys got the number two seed for like the first time since 94 or some shit like that. <laughs> uh, it gotta be, it's exciting for you, right? Yeah. If you're, if you're a, a Kansas City sports fan, I mean, the comments, by the way, the comments yeah. are, I think they haven't lost. I could be wrong. I don't think they've lost. So really they're, they're playing really well too. A lot, a lot of fun to be a Kansas City sports fan. Well, you're going to be in the. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it now in case we're uh, in case we don't do an episode next week. We've kind of been doing this every other situation. Uh, you're going to be in their their media game uh, slash celebrity game since you you did so well last <laughs> last year. Uh, they invited you back. I I chose not to. I am uh, I'm on the injured reserve, my friend. I think I've hit retirement. But I think it'll be uh, fun for you and the uh, twelve dozen people that are on the field with you. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a bunch of kids running around just kicking the ball. There was like no structure, no no nothing. It was a lot of fun though. Um, yeah. And I know you mentioned it, and we have talked about it on the pod before. But hopefully Jimmy doesn't listen to this. But I cannot think about that media game without thinking of his entrance or the lack thereof. Dude. To this day, I cannot. You can hear my voice. To this day, I yeah. cannot laugh thinking about it. It's so funny. Uh, it's just he. <laughs> Good. Tell real quick. Tell tell a story yeah. real quick for people. Quickly, it's real quick. Yeah. They they announce all the names before, right? They announce everyone. Dan, Dan Kuzer from No Other Pod, Chris Wright, you know everybody else. And then, but it was like it was like the Chicago Bulls atmosphere, right? Smoke, lights, cheerleaders music. on the side. You're running cheerleaders. through them. Woo! And then lights come on. <laughs> everyone disperses. And Jimmy's still standing at the entrance. <laughs> and, I, and you and me are at center field. And I go, bro, look at Jimmy. What is going on? And you're like, oh, my God. And then they go, and Jimmy Mack. It was like, the, it was incredibly awkward. But credit to him, man. Like, I might have just turned right back around and went back to the locker room. Like I might have said, don't, don't announce me. Like I'm fine. Do not give me no announcement is better than an announcement right now. <laughs> oh, like I started like la- like trying hard not to. La- I think I was tearing up during that because it was just like waiting. It was like a lost puppy waiting to be called out. It, 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 no, <laughs> it was like me when I got lost at Walmart from my mom, and I was just kind of standing in the middle of an aisle waiting for my mom to come back to me. <laughs> Too funny. Well, oh, I hope man. that does happen again and we get some video because that's that's funny. What's even funnier is like they put us in order by list. So we didn't choose our order, obviously, obviously, because they had to announce yeah. our names. So he got put last and then everything came up and I don't know. It was fantastic. It was ordered by by like number, I think, because you and I were together because somehow I got the same number as you and I did not choose that number. <laughs> 
What a time. You'll have a blast. I good. would score a goal or two. Uh, sure. I'll try. Cool. Folks, we're going to get out of here. Um, thank you so much for being here. If you, uh, if you, if you care about us at all and want us to have a happy new year, you'll go leave those five star ratings and reviews. Um, and you'll maybe hit us up on Twitter if you want. I don't really care if you do. Chris might. Uh, it's at Dan Couser, at Chris Wright 21, at no other pod. Uh, no other pod gmail.com. Be like Steve. And shoot us an email of your deepest thoughts and desires, and we'll uh, we'll read it on here. If it's nice, only nice stuff. If it's mean, then I'm gonna I'm gonna tear it up. I'm gonna I'm gonna troll you. That's what I do. Uh, anyways, dude. Anything else? We good? I got. That's it, man. All right, folks. Love you so much. Uh, see you when we see you. Bye.